Welcome to Insights by Zarity, the series where we speak to experts about topics concerning everyday health. I'm Abhimanyu Chauhan, CEO and co-founder at Zarity Health and the host. My aim from these conversations is to get practical takeaways that one can start implementing today. Hi, my name is Vijay Sharma. Uh, I am a pharmacist turned entrepreneur. In the past, I have worked with Pfizer India and Zydus Cadillac. Currently, I am the co-founder at Zarity. Uh, where I lead clinical product and operations. But before we begin, don't forget to hit subscribe or the follow button so you never miss an episode. And if you enjoy the talks, I truly appreciate if you could leave us a review in the comments to help spread the word. Let's start. Uh, when did you first get introduced to health supplements? So I think I got introduced to supplements some 20, 25 years back when I was a kid and I went to the doctor for my eye checkup and the doctor gave me multivitamins for uh, better eyesight. But uh, in a more technical sense, I came to know about supplements when I started working with Pfizer and working on supplements a lot. Uh, it is also the time I came to know that uh, supplements, the way they are there for humans, Similarly, there are supplements for animals also. Uh, why don't you help us understand what are health supplements? Like how do you define something as a health supplement? So supplements are basically dietary substances which are taken generally orally and which are not a part of your food. So they supplement your food, meaning that there is food that you are taking in and then there are supplements that you take on top of your food to meet your daily uh, nutrient requirement. What do you mean by uh, that they supplement your food? Supplements are helping you fill in your nutrition gaps. So what I, uh, what I mean by nutrient gap is that every nutrient is required by your body in a certain amount mm. daily. Mm. Right? And when those requirements are not met through food, there is a nutrient gap mm -hmm. that occurs, mm -hmm. right? And when the nutrient gap consistently remains in the body for a longer time, this leads to deficiencies. Mm -hmm. And then you start feeling those symptoms mm -hmm. of, you know, yeah. maybe tiredness, maybe lethargy. All of these are symptoms of mm -hmm. deficiencies which are caused because of the nutrient gaps. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I understand that we need certain nutrients in fixed quantities in a daily uh, uh, form, right? So, how do you decide how much do you need on a daily basis? So, technically, there is something called an RDA, which is the recommended daily allowance. Hmm. This has been devised by Indian Council of Medical Research, ICMR. Hmm. So, they have devised the quantities required for each, uh, each of the nutrients. Hmm. Say, for example, calcium is required in this much mg every single day mm. by a male and a female so the quantities of say mm. for example 1000 mg or 1200 mg that is defined mm. that is already there mm. so those are called the rdas mm. and then there is something called the tul or the tolerable upper limit mm. think of it as the maximum right so you need to be somewhere in between the rda and the tul so that your dietary requirements mm of the nutrient are met. Hmm. So I need somewhere between the uh, recommended daily allowance, which is the minimum, and then there is a tolerable upper limit, which is the maximum, somewhere between that, right? So to so fill these nutritional gaps. So when you say nutritional gaps, yes. I just need supplements to fill that nutrient gap? Yes, so there are a lot of use cases for supplements. For example, there are diseases where supplements can help in management of certain diseases yeah. like for example, PCOS, uh, then there is thyroid. Yeah. Uh, also, there are certain uh, diseases like diabetes yeah. where which, uh, where you, if you are taking metformin to you know manage uh, diabetes, then the B12 level in the body automatically goes down. So in those cases, you require supplementation mm. to maintain the B12 levels. Mm -hmm. So in those cases, uh, you require supplementation mm. of B12 to, you know, maintain the B12 levels, mm -hmm. right? Then there are certain other scenarios like, say, for example, you are a vegan or mm. a vegetarian. 
uh, then you might not get those nutrients from the animal sources. Yeah. So for those, you might need supplements. Or suppose you are lactose intolerant, or for some reason you have quit dairy completely. Then then you are most likely to be calcium deficient. Physiologically also, uh, when you are pregnant or you are lactating, you require certain nutrients in a larger volume. So uh, in those cases also you require supplements like for calcium, protein, etc. Right. So there are different RDAs for all these use cases, right? Is what you are trying to tell me. But then what would you say if I tell you that I am eating home cooked food almost on a daily basis? So then would you say that I would not need supplements? Uh, this is one of the most common beliefs that we have that if you're having home cooked food, mm -hmm. then probably you're getting all the nutrients in the sufficient quantity. Mm -hmm. And then you do not need supplements. Mm. But I would like to think of for this not from the source of food. Mm. Is it home cooked or is it Outside, coming from yeah. somewhere else? Yeah, I would want to think of it as how much of the quantity are you getting of the nutrients basically. Okay. Again, the RDA comes into picture, mm. right? How much you eat and what you are eating mm. is more important than the source, you know, mm. from where you are getting it. Mm. So, home cooked food is yes the number one uh, source from where you should get your nutrients but there are cases that it might not be enough mm. so if I ask you in home cooked food what is your number one source of protein mm. probably you'll say dal, uh, dal. Yes. I have dal yeah. every day yeah one katori of dal yeah. suppose but if you see one katori of dal contains around 6 to 7 grams of protein okay. and what you need every day is around 0.8 to 1 gram per kg body weight of protein so right. uh, if say for example you are 60 kgs mm. uh, you weigh 60 kgs mm. you require around 60 grams of protein wow. and one katori of dal is giving you around 6 to 7 grams of mm. protein right so uh, maximum what we do is we can have uh, dal in the break in lunch and dinner mm. right so that makes up for two katoris mm. you still you have a long way to go before you reach your rda okay. Similarly, if I ask you what is your number one source of calcium, right. you might say I have a glass of milk. Milk, yeah. Right, and apart from that, uh, tea and coffee. Mm. So even if I consider a glass of milk, mm. uh, if you see the nutritional label of mm. uh, any packaged milk, say for mm. example, a whole milk, mm. uh, it contains an, around 120 mg mm. of calcium. Okay. Right, and what you need... Mm per day as an adult hmm. is around 1000 mg wow so that's what 10% yes. of what I'm getting around 10 to 19% yeah so I'm even if you're having yeah. 10 glasses hmm. 10 of uh, milk every day hmm. only then you might be able to get hmm. your RDA for calcium right so even though these sources are from your home you're getting all of yeah. these from your home you might still be deficient so right. uh, hmm. more often than not we might require supplements on top of your home cooked food hmm. So you mentioned around 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per body weight. When you mentioned RDA is what I need to at least balance yes. out in my daily life. Right. And that is uh, common for everybody, like a male, a female or a young person. Like, how does it get defined? So this is like a common uh, general guideline again mm. given by ICMR that you mm. require 0.8 to 1 gram per kg body weight. Okay. In scenarios where you are doing more physical activities, mm. you might require more. Okay. Uh, also, if you are pregnant or mm. you are lactating, you require more protein. Right. So, those are also given uh, specific scenarios and how much of protein you would require is also, also laid down in those guidelines. Mm. But for, uh, uh, for an average person, 0.8 to 1 is the minimum that you require. Okay. Okay. So, uh, uh, would it be safe to say that if I get less of a food in a particular day, let's say I eat less, so, can I just supplement it with a multivitamin or a bunch of supplements and get my daily requirements? Wouldn't that be enough? So, supplements are not meal replacements. Okay. Right? So, if you are, if you think that you can just go about and eat anything hmm. and at the end of the day, just pop in a multivitamin and you're hmm. good to go, hmm. probably you're making a mistake because supplements will help you balance out Probably your RDAs for micronutrients like vitamins and minerals, but you still require macronutrients. Macronutrients mm. are the nutrients you require in 
larger quantity okay. hence the name macro hmm. carbohydrates good fats proteins fibers all of hmm. these are macronutrients hmm. you can't pop pills for those okay correct so you still you are getting all your energy from these macronutrients and hmm. so for your body to work smoothly you still need to take these macros in a particular amount hmm. to you know function well hmm. only the micros is something which can be balanced out using uh, supplements but not the macros hmm. interesting so like you can't really that that day has not arrived where you can replace your meal with a capsule or two maybe right so we still need energy for which we need the uh, regular food so would it be a good statement to say that everybody needs health supplements uh as a blanket statement i would say majority of us Mm. Oh, also feel healthy might require uh, supplements mm. i'll give you an interesting stat so mm. if you look at urban women between mm. the age of 18 to 49 mm. generally 50% of them are mm. anemic that's iron deficiency right yes okay so symptoms like tiredness and mm. lethargy that most mm. of us feel mm. could be linked to anemia so mm. uh so i i think most of us with our hectic lifestyle we mm. cannot you know completely rely on the food the specific food mm. and maybe because of that most of us are deficient and might need an intervention there mm. so what you're saying is that um, i need some nutrients some fixed set of nutrients on a daily basis and what let's consider a hypothetical scenario where i get the ideal most diet almost every single day and i match the rds in those cases i don't need supplements right yes if you're able to mm. meet all your requirements through food nothing yeah. like it right but practically speaking mm. that right. doesn't really happen like i said maximum what you'll do is have two mm. categories of mm. dal you might have Three mm. glasses of uh, milk, milk every day, yeah. but still you have a long way to go to meet mm. your RDS. Yeah. But the primary uh, method from where you get all your nutrients, the source should mm. always be food. Right. Followed by supplements. So supplements cannot be the main lead. The main lead Just should food, always yeah. be uh, food. The supplements are the side actors. Understood. So now, when I want to go and think about supplements, what are the types of supplements that are available out there? Ah, uh, so there are two. Technically, there are two types of supplements. One are clinical supplements; the other are dietary supplements. Okay. So clinical supplements are something which are generally prescribed by the doctor, hmm. and the same regulatory body. Mm. is looking at these supplements as mm. well as the drugs the clinical right? supplements when yes okay. when we come to dietary supplements mm. so these are food grade supplements mm. so they are the 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 rules and regulations around them are not very stringent you can just order them online you can pick them up from grocery stores you can buy it otc from the medical store all of these places right you do not need a doctor to give you these otc is over the counter right Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You don't need the doctor for getting dietary supplements. Correct. Right. Correct. So, for example, your protein powders, mm. uh, mm. May, most of your multivitamins, mm. the gummies that you see in the market these yeah. days, mm. all of these are uh, mainly dietary supplements. The regulations around them are not stringent. So, what I mean is, if you want to buy paracetamol tablet mm. from the market. Hmm. irrespective of brand you are buying hmm. it from hmm. it is ensured that it has 5 maybe 500 mg of paracetamol there hmm. are a lot of rules and regulations around how the quality is supposed to be how the stability is supposed to be hmm. uh, the manufacturing process the testing protocols hmm. all of this is well, completely laid down and the regulations are very stringent there but when it comes to dietary supplements If I ask you to pick out two calcium supplements, mm. maybe they, their composition might be completely different. Oh, interesting! The ingredients, the source of getting the mm. calcium might be uh, different. Somebody might be extracting it from main sources. Somebody mm. might be artificially manufacturing it. Mm. There, there are not too many studies required mm. to, you know, uh, uh, market a 
डायटरी सप्लीमेंट सो एंड दिस इज नॉट एन इंडिया प्रॉब्लम दिस इज द सेम केस इन यूएस एज वेल सो एफ डी ए इफ यू नो एफ डी ए इज द बॉडी विच रेग्युलेट द मेडिसिन इन द यूएस यूएस एफ डी एंड Yes, US FDA mm. and uh, FDA is not responsible for or does not have the authority for regulating dietary supplements. So I'll read out one line from FDA's uh, website. Yeah, it says that FDA does not have the authority to approve dietary supplements for safety and effectiveness or to approve their labeling before it is sold to the public. it is the responsibility of the dietary supplement ma- manufacturer or the company to ensure that the products meet the safety standards for dietary supplements and are not otherwise in violation of the law wait what the, what yeah it pretty much means that it is bit, it is it is a goodwill of the manufacturer hmm. that he doesn't do anything wrong hmm. but there is no specific guideline or fda is not responsible for maintaining the quality of the supplement so it is pretty much between the manufacturer and the customer hmm. the regulatory bodies are not too involved in the quality okay. similarly in india right. so if you are buying dietary supplements in india the regulations around it are not very stringent so quality could be compromised So the regulators, it's FSSA, right? If I'm not mistaken, they are the ones yes. that are regulating yes. supplements. That's also the ones who regulate your food, packaged foods, I guess. Correct. Correct. Interesting. So uh, what you're trying to tell me is that uh, if it, it's it's between me and the supplement manufacturer that I'm trusting this guy that he's going to give me the right kind of calcium. So then, what is their role exactly? Where does it, what does FSSA do when somebody wants to let's say launch a supplement brand in India? So Why are they there? So it is not that you and I can just start manufacturing supplements and sell it. Mm. You still require food licenses. Okay. And this is where uh, FSSAI comes into play. Mm. For example, you want to set up a manufacturing for mm. a particular uh, medicine versus mm. if you want to set up something for uh, selling a supplement. Mm. There is a vast difference. The licensing procedure, the checklist. Mm. All of those are very loose when it comes to uh, supplements compared to, to medicines. Interesting. So there are plenty of supplements. I get Instagram ads. I get uh, Facebook ads for sleeping pills when I don't need them. And there are multivitamins promising me uh, great energy throughout the day. And so, how do you figure out the ones which are the best quality amongst those? Let's say I've decided I want I want to get. So how do I get? to the best quality supplement so i would say there are a few uh, check boxes that you might always want to tick before you make a purchase of any dietary supplement mm. the first thing is that you need to be aware that supplements come in various dosage forms mm. the same thing can come in capsules tablets powders gels gummies so understanding which type of supplement is required for you mm. is very important Hmm. The second thing is that you would see there are a lot of supplement uh, hmm. brands which do not have the complete list of ingredients mentioned on the hmm. uh, on their uh, ingredient label, hmm. right? They only mention the main ingredients and not all the ingredients. So try to go for supplements which have a complete list of uh, ingredients mentioned on their label. This is very important. So does does FSSI not mandate to list out every ingredient that? that you're putting into health supplements if you would have seen a lot of herbal supplements would have something called qs written uh, mm. in them which means quantity sufficient okay so this is like the base which makes up the volume so mm. they will mention the active ingredients so suppose mm. if you're taking a vitamin c supplement with the source mm. of it is uh, some herbs mm. so they might mention the quantity of uh, amla Mm. or all of these from where vitamin c is coming in mm. but the other things that make up for the bulk the colors mm. and all of those they might or might not be written they might write just qs so i would say be wary of that and it's not because, mandatory to uh, list everything is what you are saying yes it's not okay interesting and uh, i look out for hazardous uh, ingredients again coming to herbal supplements 
uh, we always assume that natural means safe, hmm. right? There are a lot of packaging also that goes on hundred uh, percent natural, but natural is not always safe. The most common issue with herbal supplements is the presence of heavy metals and the presence of pesticide residues in the uh, herbal extracts. Okay. So, because there are not enough checklists to see and test mm. all these supplements, it is not required. Mm. So, your supplements might as well contain residues of pesticides, might have uh, heavy metals like uh, tin in them or lead in them. Okay. Right. Uh, so, al- always try to go for brands which are well established. Mm. Go for labels which are clean and which have got all the ingredients mentioned mm. on the label so that mm. they, this kind of uh, scenario can be, you know, mm. uh, avoided. And also, uh, one of the most uh, common trick uh, that most of the supplement manufacturers make are they write tall claims that rich in vitamin C, rich in calcium and when you see the percentage RDA which mm. is mentioned on the uh, ingredient label mm. it might be 2%, 3%, 5% right so always check who, uh, what you are taking how much of percent RDA is it actually meeting that mm. taking the supplement is actually meeting Mm. So these are a couple of things that one should look out for when when you are buying a supplement. Don't get impressed by tall claims or uh, good to see and uh, very easy to believe kind of uh, supplements. Uh, most of them are not clinically proven to be re- really uh, helpful. Mm. So uh, interestingly, you mentioned that when we look at the ingredient labels, it's claiming that it is rich in vitamin C and you spoke about how uh, that it's extracted from let's say amla and when you look at the label it's it'll say that it is around two percent of uh, rda now rda is something which is a recommended daily allowance which i need on a daily basis and this brand or this product is claiming that it is rich in vitamin c so there is no uh, protocol there for calling it like let's say it's a rich vitamin c source is, is there no no so a uh, thing you can use lines like uh, rich, best, mm. uh, good, mm. good source, all of these rich in fiber. Mm. You would have seen a lot of uh, products claiming mm. all of these things and there is no regulation around when can you call something as a good source, rich source, uh, high source. Mm. You can still write all of these on the packaging label and when you see the uh, percent RDA, it could be a very different story altogether. Right. And then you also spoke about the dosage forms, which is like capsules, powders and liquids. And you said that it also depends upon the form that the supplement comes in. Could you give me an example? So if you uh, if you go and buy uh, vitamin D drops, okay. especially for uh, children, hmm. the vitamin D drops, it's available in nano form as well as it is available as a normal vitamin D drops. If you look okay. at the label very clearly, then you will come to know that these are nanoparticles of mm. uh, vitamin D. So, it is absorbed better. Both okay. of them are vitamin D. Both of them are uh, liquid. Mm. They have to be taken in the same quantity, but the absorption is better mm. with the nanoparticles. There are a lot of slow dissolving uh, capsules that are available. Delayed release, sustained release, all mm. of these things, which will which slow down the absorption. So the nutrients are released a little slower mm. than uh, what a normal capsule would be. So these are different forms and all of them have their pros and cons and you might not always require a certain type of dosage form. It depends on uh, really what you're looking for, how convenient it is, what form uh, works best for your condition mm. also. Right. So, uh, sorry, what do you mean by absorption? Right, so when you uh, take in a, a, a tablet or a capsule mm. or anything for that mm. matter, mm. It, uh, when you are taking it orally, it goes to your uh, stomach okay. where it gets, where it breaks down. Basically, mm. it gets disintegrated mm. and then it gets dissolved mm. and mm. only after uh, disintegration and dissolution, it goes, uh, whatever it is intending to do happens. Mm. So, this is what I mean by uh, dissolving. So, some are uh, rapidly dissolving. If you Mm. would see, there are a lot of rapidly dissolving medicines that you Mm. see. 
Mm. Yeah, you just put it in a glass of water; it will rapidly uh, disintegrate. Right, becomes, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, th- uh, those are absorbed quicker. Okay. So you want a faster releasing and quicker absorption uh, mm. products when it comes to something for acidity for pain medications. We use mm. rapid. Uh, we use technology so that dissolve rapidly. Uh, uh distributed in the body so that mm. uh, you, you feel better quicker mm. and then there are slow or sustained release products as well mm. so uh, this goes for medications this also goes for uh, supplements as well mm. Mm. so slow or uh, slow releasing multivitamins are popular nowadays in uh, uh, india as well okay uh, where the dissolution uh happens very slowly and uh, then it is uh, absorbed by the body okay So when you speak of absorption, uh, it's not like there is a percentage of absorption. It's about the speed of absorption, right? So I don't need to be worried about that. Uh, this uh, form, let's say a capsule or a powder, is not absorbed properly by my body. There might be a timing uh, factor there that this is how slowly or fast it is getting absorbed. So there are uh, uh, guidelines around what the absorption rate has to be. Uh, mm. There are also guidelines around how much should be absorbed mm. and how much is eliminated, mm. right? But this is all true for uh, medical grade supplements and for medicines. So, is the time factor a relevant thing in absorption, or is there something else somebody who's buying supplements need to be concerned about? Ah, uh, so apart from the time factor, the form of Supplement is uh, very important. So, for example, the form of the salt. Say, for example, calcium can come as calcium carbonate, calcium oxalate as well. Both are sources of calcium, mm. but the rate of absorption, the amount of it, of uh, what will be absorbed, are very different. Mm. Right. So, uh, I would say these are very, very technical topics mm. which we might not know. When mm. we see an ad, we don't know. We don't even think that mm. the quality could be different. What we see is that okay, this is a good-looking ad, mm. fancy-looking packaging. It is affordable. Let me just go ahead and buy it, right? Mm. Uh, so I I would say it would be wise to take a professional's help mm. before you know just uh, putting mm. in your money to uh, uh, and buying a supplement because at the mm. end of the day you want something out of it, right? Mm. you want to either improve your health or meet mm. your uh, daily requirement yeah this was basically my next question where i was going to ask you uh, what should be one careful about when they are about to buy a dietary supplement uh the number one thing is that a lot of supplements do not have clinical studies done to back the claims Mm. So there, there could be less studies or clinically inconclusive studies that are done, and because it is not a very stringent and regulated field, mm. one needs to be really careful about uh, what kind of supplements are they going for. Mm. Uh, and uh, stay careful if there are if something looks like a magic remedy. Mm. Uh, uh, most often than not, it is not going to help you at all. You are going to waste your money. Mm. So. Uh, Go for clinically proven uh, supplements only. Mm. Uh, don't uh, waste your money. Uh, you know, ha- thinking that uh, a supplement can you know do a miraculous job for you. It mm. uh, it uh, always doesn't do it. Mm. Okay, for for somebody just starting out, how do they go about planning their supplementation? I would say the first step should always be speaking to your doctor. Hmm. Uh, uh, go to a doctor who first of all understands supplements, who is well aware about supplements, hmm. who is abreast with what the latest in the hmm. supplement area is, hmm. right? Uh, so when you go to the doctor, they will ask you uh, a lot of uh, questions about your medical history, what kind of symptoms you are facing, hmm. what kind of uh, goals you need to achieve medically, hmm. right? So all of these will make them rule out certain things, maybe confirm certain things through lab tests. So they might mm. prescribe lab tests to you, blood tests, mm. so that uh, if there are any clinical deficiencies mm. associated with your symptoms, mm. then uh, they could be, you know, identified, and then a clinical supplement 
can be prescribed by the doctor one very important aspect when it comes to doctor prescribing supplements is that they make sure that your supplement is not interfering with any of the medicines that mm. you're already taking or right. any kind of food that you're taking mm. if you have been prescribed warfarin or aspirin mm. which are blood thinners mm. and apart from that you also require vitamin e which mm. is also a blood thinner mm. right apart from all the other properties one of the properties is that it also uh, mm. thins your blood mm. so if you're taking all, both of these together the supplement mm. as well as the medicine Mm. together it could uh, lead to very uh, high risk of stroke okay so the doctor will rule out those uh, mm. things probably they would give you a substitute or mm. they would space it out in a manner so that there is no interaction between your medicine and your supplements which is very very important mm. right so uh, uh, the, the first step needs to be going to your doctor understanding mm. what supplements they want to prescribe mm. and clinically being sure that all the deficiencies and all the symptoms have been taken care of so you spoke about uh, clinical deficiencies right can you help me with an example what does a clinical deficiency mean okay. so uh, remember how we spoke about rds yeah. which is the uh, nutrient deficiency, yeah. uh, correct so when the dietary deficiency so think of it as you require x amount of or some mineral or some mm. vitamin every day when mm. you are not meeting it mm. every single day so the gap widens okay right once once it becomes a very substantial deficiency you start to see clinical symptoms which means there are symptoms associated with it which your body starts mm. showing and you start experiencing right mm. so on day number 1 if you're not taking enough of iron your body is not going to show any uh, symptoms of tiredness right right but once but when it happens over a period of time mm. uh, the deficiency increases and that is when tiredness kicks mm. in that mm. is when your body is giving you signals that you know mm. uh this needs to be taken care of right. so then this is called a clinical deficiency which a clinician or a doctor identifies uh, through uh, taking your history through running some test right so uh, if i am iron deficient in my reports that's when i could say that i have a clinical deficiency of iron and most likely you will be prescribed a clinical uh, supplement for meeting up those deficiencies so what happens next right if i if i get that supplement with the doctor and then do i need a dietary supplement for that like i would still be short of my daily requirement for that portion of iron right that's where i got to this point in the first place so what should the next best step be then so the doctor is going to prescribe you either medication if it is required mm. or a clinical uh, grade supplement mm. to help you overcome that deficiency mm. for a fixed amount of time it will not be an indefinite uh, course mm. that you have to take either a week or a month depending on uh, what mm. kind of a deficiency you have mm. right but once that is done mm. every day you are still taking that same food so you are very likely to be deficient of that same uh, right. vitamin or mineral again so you would mm. have seen a lot of us have a b12 deficiency we take a course of medicines or yeah. supplements we, and yeah. then in the yeah uh, and then uh, the blood reports are fine mm. and the next year when we when, when you are getting the test done again mm. you are mm. again deficient because mm. the the food is still the same mm. right So you're still short daily on those uh, vitamin B12, for example, yeah. yeah? So uh, I would say next after your course with the clinical supplement is over, always mm. go to a clinical nutritionist. Okay. They they are people who understand your mm. uh, blood reports. They work alongside the doctor mm. and help them. Uh, iron out your diet mm. if there is something that uh, can be changed so that these deficiencies do not happen again and again mm. Mm. so they can do it through food and in case there is some dietary supplement required mm. then the clinical nutritionist might recommend you to take them mm. so neither the clinical supplements nor the dietary supplement should be taken on your own always mm. take the help of a doctor followed by a clinical nutritionist who can mm. plan out your diet in a manner that all the nutrients all the macros as well as the micros are mm. in place so that you mm. feel healthy interesting 
I think I have my part. So you have given me the framework on how should I start with supplements. So uh, if I feel a symptom, I need to go to the doctor first, and where they are going to take a uh, total history, note taking, and try to understand uh, any symptoms if I have them, and then they are going to look at uh, to solve it with medications or with clinical supplementation, and. once that course ends is when i go to a clinical nutritionist right and uh, they help me plan my diet and supplements in a manner that i don't again fall into that deficiency zone so let's say if i don't have any symptoms and you spoke about recommended daily allowance so then is it wise to say that i should go and consult a nutritionist and clinical nutritionist if i'm not mistaken and they help me plan my diet and supplementation would that be the correct course uh yes i would still say that go to a doctor so that they mm. are able to rule out uh, any other uh, medical uh, conditions mm. Mm. if everything is fine mm. then you uh, the number one person you need to see is a clinical nutritionist they will uh, help you uh, mm. and go to a clinical nutritionist who again understands Mm. your uh, uh, reports mm. who understand supplements macros mm. micros in depth and mm. uh, uh, they will help you plan out uh, the meal and you don't need to see them very often mm. right uh, most of the times if everything is going fine uh, you don't need to uh, see them every 7 days 10 days they will give you a, a good diet that you can follow Mm. along with the supplementation and only when the change is required is when you might uh, want to uh, consult them or visit them again right i think i have my part so let me just ask you this uh, personal question that are you taking any health supplements yes yes i am i take protein supplement i take a multivitamin mm. then i take calcium supplement all of these are some things and then if there is something that requires medical at, uh, attention mm. so for example when i was pregnant i was mm. given clinical grade uh, supplement so i mm. was taking those yeah i think uh, thank you so much i have my part all right thank you right thank you thanks for tuning in to insights by zarity health we hope you enjoyed today's talk and gained valuable insights If you want to stay updated on our latest episodes, make sure to subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Instagram wherever you are watching this at. Help us grow by sharing this with anybody you think might find this interesting. And when you need to, you can consult our doctors and nutritionists through our website zarity.care. We are a telehealth clinic that focuses on chronic care. Our experts spend more time with you to find out the root cause of your symptoms and then treat it with medicine, nutrition and behavioral changes. And last but not the least, If you have questions that you think we should ask the experts don't forget to put them in comments thanks once again for tuning in